let's rewind to the beginning. Um, when <coughs> you started playing football, so what made you pursue football as a career? Or, or your earliest childhood memory of playing football? Well, I suppose you become a product of your environment, yeah. really, and that's mm -hmm. how things happen. If you were, if you were with a musical family, so suddenly you come yeah. in to become a, a pianist mm -hmm. and, and suddenly become great. Or if you're a, you live with a, a, a chess master, then suddenly you'll, you become a good <laughs> chess player. And, and I was lucky to be only three houses away mm -hmm. from a, my back garden was a football field. Okay. We had about eight football fields and mm -hmm. every day they had training um, there. So I was down there from when I was six years old every night helping collect the balls for people doing shooting or, or joining in training. So that was probably the, the thing is that I had the perfect environment in, um, in Perth, Western okay. Australia, a, a town called Quinana to that everyone played football, everyone seemed to be happy playing football. Okay. So I thought, oh, yeah, why not give that a shot? Okay. Did your parents <coughs> encourage you to play football? Or? My parents weren't actually a football family, to be honest. Okay. <coughs> but they um, didn't really know much about the game, but they were all, always supportive. And I suppose the best thing they did was, was to buy a house just near, near, a, near a football field. Okay. But they, now they love it. But at, at the time, my, my father didn't play and my mother didn't play. Uh -huh. And so um, just the, the people around us did so. So now you're encouraging your children. I, I read that you have four boys mm. and two of them are playing football as well. Yep. So how, how is it difficult for you to separate your responsibility as a coach and a father, I mean? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I think <laughs> one, one thing is about uh, I like to do is, you know, I don't like to be judged by other people's standards, yeah. if you know what I mean. And mm -hmm. some, some people have their perception about things, but my standards are, are, are my own. And so for me, um, you know, I've got no problems at all with the fact that, um, you know, my sons, um, we've got four. One is um, signed for a Reading Football Club in England, where they just were in the Premiership last year. He's come back on loan with us for, for this season, just okay. for, for one year. Well, my eldest son has, um, has rejoined the club. Mm -hmm. And my other two, who are 11 year old and 13 year old, they're also in the um, development Junior. pathway. Yeah. And a bit like I was talking to Fundy Yama, his sons are, are, quite, are quite talented. And like because of the environment they were probably mm -hmm. brought up in, mm -hmm. and um, the, the the two eldest ones who play with the, with the team now, all their teammates, uh, the same teammates that they had when they were under 13s and 14s okay. and 15s and 16s. Okay. So for them, it's just um, rejoining their 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 teammates. But um, yeah, it's uh, at home. I'm, I'm dad yeah. and things like that. But on the on the park, it, they're just they're just like. But um, how do you any separate it? I mean. You know, I'm sure sometimes you bring work home as well, like, you know, when you lecture them on the dinner table about what they did no, that, on that's, the court. That's what I'm saying. That's one of the things that, that in our house, I'm one of those guys that can that switch off. We very rarely um, talk about football okay. at, at home because mm -hmm. that's the that's switch true. off time. So at, at home, and besides, and the older ones now, uh, Cameron's 21 and, and uh, Ryan's 19, and I was living in, in Singapore and Malaysia at that age, so we're, they're their own people, yeah. and basically they're hardly home anyway. <laughs> so they, they go to training, they've got their friends, they've got their, um, they're, they're always out, and uh, so they're really enjoying it. They've spent the last uh, three years mm -hmm. following in, in, I suppose, in similar footsteps to me. They've lived in England yeah. for the last, um, for two years, two years, three years. Mm -hmm. um, they've been involved with all the state teams going through. They've been involved with the under-17 national team, the under-20 national team. So they're getting their um, non-university education, the life education, by travelling all over Asia and playing football. Okay. And they're, um, they're going on along okay. We've got a five-a-side team with me and Goal. <laughs> okay. but, but we've, um, we've always tried to have the, uh, a girl. So the second one, which is Ryan, was supposed to be a girl. Didn't happen. Supposed to be. Christian <laughs> is the third one, supposed to be a girl, and didn't happen. <laughs> Aiden, the young, youngest one, didn't happen. But, you know. Okay. So it would have been nice to have a, uh, a girl in the family. Yeah. Some, to do ballet or netball or something else. <laughs> but I was just um, given the, the four boys and the, it's, um, it's good. If you could redo anything in your life, what would it be and why? Um, I wouldn't actually. You there's, there's, there's nothing and the reason to say nothing because at that particular time um, and that particular moment in the present, when you're in the present, whatever I've done is what I believed mm -hmm. was good for at the time. You know what I mean? And um, yeah. there are reasons why I've 
because I've always, like Jurgen Klinsmann, for example, mm -hmm. he's a you know, top German player, played at the World Cups, and that's from my era, probably not so much from your era. He's a superstar. He had a philosophy that he wanted to live, go and spend two years in different countries mm -hmm. so he can learn the language, mm -hmm. and he did that. He went from two years in Germany, two years in England, two years in, you know, different countries, and he learned all different languages. And so, you know, everyone's got their own uh, different way of doing things. Um, and I wanted to go and, and experience uh, the world and, and, and see the world. So I had two years in Singapore and, and two years in, in Johor and uh, you know two years in England and you know so those type of um, things that I've sort of um, done as well. But I look back on on my career and I think I've got a lot more to go in in my career. And uh, I really don't. I things have been been really good. Mm -hmm. I've been in. As soon as I left um, uh, playing, I've got no regrets about retiring at, yep. at 33 and 34. I, um, I've been lucky enough to go straight into the national coaching. So I was coaching the um, under-20 women's national team for, for, for four years. And then I was lucky enough to get involved in the men's under-20 team mm -hmm. for a few years and then, then go into the under-17 national team for, for years. And things have always happened that have, um, you know, progressed and... and kept me involved in, in football, so no, 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 no regrets. regrets. No regrets, nothing to redo. No. <laughs> Coming up. It's very easy for me to switch off um, from, from, from football. And later on Stadium Unplugged. And I hear you can speak Malay pretty well. <laughs>